Oh, hey guys, Boss and Finn back um, with a video response for my buddy Eddie of Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. Um, and he put out kind of a contest of people sharing their favorite, like, human interest stories in sports and kind of, you know, what, what interested them, what kind of, you know, human interest story in terms of, you know, athletes coming back from illnesses or disabilities and stuff and, and persevering through that. So I have a video response from Eddie today. Um, and it's one, I, I don't know if you call it human interest story, but one that I think fits and that I've kind of had a uh, strong affinity for for a long time. So when I was in high school, um, senior year, um, I received this book from my high school baseball coach from Roger Angel or Angel, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Um, a picture story innings with David Cohn. Um, and so I read it as a high schooler. Um, and what really struck me is kind of the things that David Cohn had to overcome in just becoming a great pitcher. So this was early 2000s, coming off the late 90s when he was the generally the ace of the Yankees. If he wasn't considered the ace, he was like A1. Um, you know, he pitched a perfect game in 99. He was a several-time 20-game winner. He won the Cy Young in 94. Um, led the league in strikeouts a couple times back when he was with the Mets. Um, I think he won five World Series, four with the Yankees, one with uh, Toronto in 92. Um, and so in reading that book, you know, I gained a huge amount of respect for David Cohn. You know, he, he sometimes came off as a hothead and, and, and whatnot and, you know, was part of that kind of crazy Mets team. But he underwent th kind of three huge or large injuries uh, through his career and he kind of didn't get derailed and he, he ended up having a really nice career. When he was in the minor leagues, he missed all of 1983 because he tore his ACL and maybe his MCL as well in a collision at home plate when he was covering um, on a, a pass ball. Um, and so he had to miss an entire year of minor league baseball rehabbing that. And, you know, that's not when, like now when the surgery is pretty straightforward and, and people are walking like the next week. And then they, of course, have to go through a lot of rehab. Um, but, you know, the book describes, and I went back and looked, describes that you can still see t scars on either side of his knee from the surgery. Um, and so he had to rehab a lot from that um, to the point where he actually, he was in the Kansas City minor league system and he... Um, to rehab, asked to be to, to go to Kansas City to go to the major league ball club and facilities and use their facilities. And even as like a single or double A player, I can't remember where he was. Um, he was on the exercise bike every day, rehabbing the knee as soon as he was out of his, you know, brace and whatnot. Um, and the players on the Royals at that time remembering this little, you know, 18, 19 year old kid busting his butt on those exercise bikes and Dennis Leonard talked about you know they used to kind of give him a hard time and then a few weeks after that he tore one of the ligaments in his knee and then was joining him on the exercise bike so he got through that persevered got up to the major leagues um got traded to the Mets in 87 and then towards the end of that year he um was trying to put a bunt down against Atlee Hamaker and broke his pinky finger um where it's I guess permanently somewhat deformed a little bit um and the book doesn't go into detail about that, but says that he had some major surgery done to correct that. Um, so another kind of thing that he got through the next year, he went on to win 20 games with the 88 Mets um, and then continue on. But then the big one, I think a lot of you know, is that in 1996, um, he was pitching in May, he pitched an okay game against Chicago, came out of the game um, and described that his the right side of his hand fell to sleep and his fingers were blue or pink or purple, blue, pink. They're blue and purple. Um, and so they did an, an angioscope and found blood clotting. He had had a procedure done like a week before. They found blood clotting up and down his arm. And so they did more testing and they found an aneurysm in there. Um, and so I went through what aneurysms were. And it's basically like a bulge vein or blood vessel that can rupture. Um, and, in cause, and it can cause um, internal bleeding that it's hard to stop at times, depending on where it is. And the major kinds, of course, are aortic um, aneurysms, aneurysms in your heart, or brain aneurysms. David Cohn had neither. It was in his pitching arm, um, but the injury had it burst like it could. And that's the, the thing with aneurysms. Um, he could have lost feeling in his arm. He could have lost um, 
essentially the ability to pitch up to the point where, you know, worst case scenario, he could have lost his arm with the injury. Um, and so he had the aneurysm removed in his arm that May and replaced with a, a vein from his leg. Um, and I can't imagine, A, going through that surgery just sounds ugh, gross and awful and terrible. But he persisted through it. He rehabbed. He came back late in that year um, and helped them as they clinched the division, made it to the World Series, won the World Series. And then, of course, he was on the 98 and 99 World Series Yankees teams, made huge contributions to them. And then this story takes place during his 2000 season, which was really rough for him as his career came to an end. But he came over those, you know, two major injuries. And then I don't know where you want to put the pinky finger on his throwing hand, um, came through that injury to have a really successful career. And I really admired just the, his willingness to fight through all that stuff where torn ligament in the minor leagues might've stopped him. And certainly an aneurysm in your arm, you know, that can lead to, to losing your arm would be something that would stop a lot of people of just like, it's not worth it. We're going to get this healed and I'm done. And he kept fighting and kept playing. Um, and so much so that that summer in high school, after reading that and thinking it was so cool, I loaded up on David Cohn rookie cards. So I just pulled these out. This is from my childhood hard case box. I remember going, I think I paid even a dollar for all these at a show, but there's five Don Russ rookie cards and four Topps Trade rookie cards. I bought all of those at... I think one show after reading this book, the summer after my senior year of high school. And then several years ago, David Cohn has a fee through the mail. But I, you know, had this really strong affinity toward Cohn and his, his ability to fight back through all those injuries. So I wrote him, I think, a three-page letter just about reading this book and, and what it meant to me to, to learn about fighting through it. And one of my highlight TTMs... David Cohn on a Red Sox card. He pitched the 2001 season with the Red Sox, and he signed it and waived his signing fee for me, um, which I thought was really cool. So Eddie David Cohn, I think, got through, a, came through a lot or worked through a lot to to make such a successful big league career, um, and he's one in terms of a human interest story of fighting through adversity um, that's always stuck with me since I learned about him pitching. Has always meant a lot to me. Um, so there's my video response for you, Eddie. I hope it. It, it makes the cut in terms of getting entered into your drawing. But if not, that's okay. That's just, this is just how I feel about David Cohn. And, and I know that some people might have bigger adversities they fought through or, or whatnot. But for me, David, this one's always stuck out, David Cohn for me. So everybody, I know this is kind of boring and, and not a lot, but thanks for watching. And uh, if you get a chance, Pitcher's Story Innings with David Cohn, it's an okay baseball book. It's not the greatest you'll ever read. I found it really interesting as a, as a teen um, and I may even read it again just because, you know, I was reading, flipping through the pages and I was finding like, oh, I know this guy, he TTMs and, you know, a random common guy. But here I am seeing his name as David going progresses through the minor leagues and stuff. So I might give it another read. So anyway, thanks for watching. Eddie, thank you for putting this contest up. I appreciate it. And uh, an early happy birthday to you as this is due on your birthday. Thank you, guys. Bye.